All right, Jay Wayne, you're on the clock with the one one for uh old Brian Penyak's team. Again, this is a little home league action. So uh he's on the Sandusky Niners is the official squad name. It's a bad name. Terrible so, name. Who's it gonna be? You going Harry Sanders? <laughs> I can't think of Harry without being like Uh, I'm Montgomery. Take, I think I'll take. Mm, that's what I'm taking. A nah. fresh, a fresh crack. That was a good one. That was a good. That, that was, was a strong, good, good crack. It was crispy, clean, crispy, clean. And that's what I'm gonna take. Number one. I'm not gonna tell you who my team is. It's a pretty decent team in this league that we're that we're you know mocking up here. You get the first overall pick by winning the loser bowl, basically. Yep. And advancing each week, so it's. Kind of a bummer because it's usually a better team that thri- that's thriving at the end of the year that, that gets that number one instead of the overall, instead of the worst team in the league. But it's it's a cool caveat. Keeps you keeps you interested at the end of the year. I'm going Josh Jacobs. Let's, All right. Let's be real. Come on. Uh, this is a running back show where we could be called that if we wanted to be. Uh, and I just, I don't see any reason not to take Josh Jacobs. Uh, he's going to have all the opportunity in the world. I believe I love the player. I think he's got, obviously, the prototypical size and the smooth and fluidness. I think you can make an excuse for his low attempt total. He played on a broken ankle, so he says. Uh, His footwork is outstanding. That was in 17, right? So he missed a lot of 17. Uh, He can string moves together. He's got amazing balance. The pad level is probably the best in the class. He's a violent runner. But smooth at the same time, he can he can finish with power drink. Uh, he just does everything. He's like a he's got a force field with his offhand. He's thwarting you. He's pushing off you. He's stiff arming you. It's just really hard to get this guy down. I think he's got some long speed. I think it builds. It's faster than what his forty was, I believe, at at, at his pro day, and he was kind of nursing an injury, which that's kind of one of the knocks on him. But I mean, I love him in the passing game. I think both patch, passing cat both. Pass catching and pass protection is is top notch, and I think, like I said off the rip, he's going to get plenty of opportunity. He plays with a chip on his shoulder ever since coming out of high school, and uh, yeah, I don't see any reason why you don't take him number one. Yeah, good, regardless of team. Good story about Josh Jacobs, how how he came to be, and and you know what he's gone through, and then uh, putting his own highlight tape on Twitter. Um. Pretty crazy, pretty crazy how all that went down. Um, yeah. Uh, and then Saban came knocking and said, "You know what? We'll uh, we'll take you." Right. No one had really given him an offer, and Saban's like, "Well, what's wrong with him? Because everything on tape looks great." Right. And so they gave him an offer, and Oklahoma came coming, coming late. Yeah. And then he uh, was like, "Nah, I'm good." Well, with the with the first guys who offered him, and how could you not go with Bama? This guy was. Yeah. Uh, Pretty fun to watch, and again, you know, you can you could knock them for, you know, maybe lack of production a little bit, but it's what kind of what Alabama does. There's always at least two guys in the fold, and there happened to be kind of three uh, once uh, the other Harris came came to be this year uh, for the for the Crimson Tide here, and and like you said, he did play through some injuries, but this he's a very good player. He's got everything you want. People were a little offended by the slow forty time at the at the pro day, like you said, but. I think this is offended. <laughs> they were. People do get offended easily. They, they do. Such jerks. Um, first, first running, first and only running back off the board in, in the first round. So you got to like that draft um, capital. And then you know he goes over to the Raiders with Mayock and Gruden, and and this is seemingly kind of what Gruden wants and what he's always kind of hung his hat on. He likes to design offenses and that that type of stuff, but he also wants a mainstay back back there who you know can do a little bit of everything. And that's what you get with Josh Jacobs. Um, I'm I'm with you. I would definitely take a running back number one, and and I'm 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 okay with saying Josh Jacobs is uh is the guy. Um, and no, I'm not really. If I guess if you were really 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 receiver needy, I could see having you know maybe some some questions here. But for the most part, I want the running back, and uh, I'm down with 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 Joshua. As, as the first pick now some people um want to talk about you know well Jalen Richard could really I've seen this as a real thing could really you know impact the receiving volume of Josh Jacobs is there uh any any concern with that who 
Jalen no, Rashard. I know who Jalen Rashard is. <laughs> Jalen Rashard. Jalen Rashard is a good NFL running back. I think he's a solid pro. He's, he's a good NFL pass catcher. He's, he's a good change of pace. He's not a grinder. Um, and like you said, John Gruden likes a he likes a bell cow. Um, he had 81 targets last year and 68 catches. So, sure, that's so solid. Some, if you're right. gonna cite those stats and what he did, you know, sure, you could. It's, it's something that you could bring up if you didn't want if you wanted to make an argument against Jacobs, but I don't. I don't see. Well, everything's there's context to everything. You got a, an offense that was falling apart, and they really only they traded away Amari Cooper. They only had Jared Cook, and they had a a very skittish acting quarterback at the time. You know, Carr's been up and down in his career. He's, Offensive line was up and down. only a couple of years ago. The team was twelve and four, headed to the playoffs, and week seventeen or sixteen, he breaks his leg. But before that, he was an MVP candidate, and he was the next coming of the best quarterback in the NFL. And then last year, we've all seen the fourth down play where he threw the ball in the dirt. And it's like, well, you didn't even throw it up to give your receiver mm-hmm. a chance because you're about to get hit. So he's been through the ringer. It's been up and down. And maybe if when it's down, your satellite back's going to get some check downs because he wants the ball out of his hands. And the team had obviously given up on the offensive side of the ball for that year and defensively if you want to talk about letting your fit one of the best pass rushers in the league you know, get traded away for a first-round pick. A um, couple firsts. So, but the thing about it is, like you said, I mean, Gruden does want the grinder. Um, the biggest thing for me here was that they took him with a second first round pick instead of the third first round pick. And I was typing this up on Patreon right after the draft. Somebody asked a question about Jacobs. And that obviously, to me, it felt like instead of saying, okay, we got a first round, we got another first round pick, who's, who's out here, we, we could probably take this running back. It was like, we got two first-round picks left, but let's get this running back that we really want to bring in here and use his three-down skill set, and then we'll figure it out with our next third-round pick, mm-hmm. third, for our, our third first-round pick. Is the way I felt that that played out in my mind for the Raiders going ahead and making him the second first-round pick of theirs instead of the last one. Um, so I put a lot of I put some capital into their capital because they didn't have to do that. They're, they could have said, hey – we do like Jacobs and we do like Sanders potentially. And there's no chance all three of them go Mm -hmm. between this first round pick and our next next first round pick, but they didn't want to lose them to a team that might, you know, want to grab a first, you know, grab a a running back. So they took them and I like that. And Graham bar, I, I, I think it's pretty public knowledge now that I had a baby recently and this is the least amount of film watching I've done on the rookies. And I'm not going to pretend like I haven't, but I have been trying to catch up a ton. And my first stop was FF dynasty's rookie shows with you guys. And my second stop was the uh, the Patreon rookie shows with you guys. And then my third, fourth, and fifth stops were basically taking in anything I could anywhere else. And Graham Barfield says that Josh Jacobs was crushing it on his yards created and it's all this good stuff. And he's just got a ton of things that, that go in good for him. And for me, it is – you got to love I, – I love a 220-pound running back that can catch passes. And that was I was on me some late, you know, some Kalen Balaj last year, Balazs. because he's a big dude that can catch passes, and this is a lot more complete yeah. running back that Absolutely. can catch, and he's two hundred twenty pounds, and he can catch passes. He's an every down player, exactly. So, and I I think he's he's stepping in. I know for a fact Casey could make a decent argument for David Montgomery, and I know that you could uh, you could. There's a lot of people that could make some some arguments that Miles Sanders might come out of here as being the best dynasty running back out of this class. But I think starting off going forward, I don't. It's hard to say that Josh Jacobs is gonna, is not going to have the best opportunity to yeah. to return on this one one pick. For sure. That value is going to yeah. be better off spent on Jacobs more than likely yeah. than anybody else. Yeah, that's why I'm not gonna. You know, I don't. I can't make too crazy of an argument. Um, I did. I have seen some. Jalen Rashard blowback uh, and some pass catching. Mm-hmm. Eighty one targets is a lot, but like you said, down down quite a bit. No offensive line help. You traded a, your best two players in the season. Receivers. Like what's going to happen? You right. traded Mari Cooper and Khalil Mack, the best but two players you had. They've since you know Colton Moore, I believe that's his name. He'll he'll get another year old. Um, they 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 brought in uh, Trent Brown um, from the patriots over there and they've 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 made strides towards improving the offensive line which is awesome for josh jacobs and the raiders and i i believe in Derek carr as an efficient as a good quarterback in the or at least an above average quarterback in the league able to get it done you you, you put a b on the field um you put uh tyrell williams stretching the defense and then you got your boy hunter Renfro over there uh running yeah. around in the slot so some good options um go taggers and then you know, on top of that, you lose Marshawn Lynch. Uh, 
Crowell goes down. Not that those guys would have been really taking anything from a first round running back necessarily, but they're all Crowell's out of the way. A good but runner. But uh, through uh, what Marshawn Lynch was doing last year through his six games, I mean, he saw twenty targets in those six games, catching fifteen of them, which isn't a ton. But if you're going to tell me that that pro rates to about forty, right? And and you would imagine there'd be a couple more for Josh Jacobs. So if you can tell me that Josh Jacobs can see four to five targets a game which I think they want to they don't want to really put Richard on the field unless they have to I think they kind of want to keep Jacobs on the field and not be able to tip your hand I'm sure he's a rookie and they'll give him a breather and Richard's not a bad player so you can put him out there but through Marshawn's first couple of games he had 11 attempts in the first game two targets 18 attempts in the second game two targets 19 against attempts in the third game four targets 20 attempts in the uh fourth game five targets nine attempts and then 13 attempts and two and five targets in those games so for the most part uh they, they were more than willing to to have uh Marshawn be a belt in a sort of a bell cow role and he was paying dividends for fantasy owners at that point especially because he was catching a right. couple of balls here and there and that's something that Marshawn typically you know wasn't really known for so you put a guy in there who's one of his big check marks is that he can catch passes and be the every down grinder. I think, you know, you're seeing a guy, if you're going to tell me that I can get 15, 16 to 20, 22 attempts and three to five targets a game with my one, one pick and you got a B on the field, um, holler at me. I'm, I'm in. I like it. All right. I guess we're moving right along then. That pick means n- move forward. Pick numero dos in the, FF Dynasty's 2019 rookie mock it up so you don't fuck it up. Before you fuck it up. Mm. Same thing. Hope I ain't fucking it up over here for Crispy Oakley's. His Big team. is on the clock. I'm over here. Like uh, like we just had we uh, first pick, we just mentioned that they played for the first pick in the win- loser's bracket. Uh, basically, everybody that didn't make the playoffs played for the number one pick. So this team here is is spotty. But you can see the reason why he made it to the championship game for the first pick. My man's got Derrick Henry, Damian Williams. Those guys were hard to beat in the playoffs last year, and he had them both on the same team. Um, so Crispy Oakley here, he's got Le'Veon Bell who had a you know a, a year off. So he's got Le'Veon Bell coming back, Derrick Henry, Damian Williams who kind of dodged some bullets for the Chiefs in the offseason, uh, you know, a flex starter Deion Lewis to back up his boy Derrick Henry it gets really rough when it comes time to plug in wide receivers for Crispy Oakley here uh Robert Woods and it goes downhill real quick Muhammad Sanu Cordell Patterson Taylor Gabriel Michael Crabtree and that that's the fun part of playing for the picks in the offs in the losers bracket because you're like how does anybody have a good have a good back half of the season with that type of uh, roster but jared cook leaves oakland goes over you. to saints so with a solid running back core robert woods hanging out for the wide receiver position and jared cook he did have gronk or entire on him uh so i'm going to kill harry at one two here all right my man crispy oakley couldn't need a wide receiver worse uh could you Make an argument. You with this the way this league is set up. There's plenty of starters. You can start up to four running backs. You can start. He does up, have Marquise Lee on, on IR. That's good. That's true. That's true. I don't mean to undersell Marquise Lee. <laughs> it's you know my man Marquise Lee. I, I expect him. I hope he comes back solid. It is tight end premium, but you're not going to get one and a half points for uh, Nikhil Harry. Just in case you're wondering, what's that mean? Oh. Like the kill could be a tight end. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, if he, I, sh, I hope he catch. You'd still get those six points for those tight end touchdowns, though. I, uh, I feel like Crispy Oakley is is about. You could. I don't know if there's another team in the league that needs a wide receiver more. Um. So I and I think Nikhil Harry for him at one two is a very solid attempt at a startable wide receiver early on and a really good asset grab at one two. There's a uh, you know. I'm I'm expecting big things out of David Montgomery, and I think that Miles Sanders could be really awesome for Philly. Uh, but Nikhil Harry, you could take him here at one two for Crispy Oakley's team. Maybe you don't even play it down with him. There's a lot of people had Nikhil Harry at their top wide receiver position before the NFL draft. He gets the first round draft capital, goes to the Patriots, 
who have big needs in the wide receiver room and tight end department. And Nikhil Terry big is big enough to take some of that red zone uh, attention that Gronk used to get and, and thrive with it. So I feel like it's a really good pick for him where he's at to dodge the running backs and go Nikhil Harry here. And maybe he uses them in a package to, to go somewhere else and grab another wide receiver that he knows more about. Maybe he just rides into the, to the, uh, you know, into the darkness with Nikhil Harry in week one and, and lets it rip. Yeah. I, uh, coming in slow over there, not feeling it. Well, I, I'm, it, he does, he definitely needs a receiver. Um, and I'm, Obviously, Harry's most people's one one, like you said, and I, I like the idea of <laughs> I like the idea of of kind of getting them and and trying to cash in on the uh, the value and the cachet that Harry is currently carrying right now. Um, my biggest thing with Harry is, is if you if he's ready to go and and win right now and and uh, um, which I, I'm not sure that that he necessarily is. I mean. Certainly, Le'Veon Bell and Damian Williams and Derrick Henry could help propel you to get to get ready to uh, try to take on some people. And Jared Cook being a little premium isn't a bad uh, start for you. But I'm not 100 percent sure this team's ready to ready to go right away. Unless I'm and if I'm red, that's the only reason I'm grabbing Harry, keeping him, and and trying to play with him. Um, I do. I worry a little bit about Harry at you know life after Tommy Brady. Like, what are we what are we doing? How do you feel about that? Like, I like I like the fit right now. I like the contested catch champion that is Nikhil Harry, um, and the dink and dunk offense and the versatility. A, a, that a really brings. good, yeah, some versatility and a really good, you know, kind of run after the catch player. Yuck. But what happens if you know? I mean, Tom Tom wasn't lighting the league on fire by any means last year. Not that he needs to for the Patriots to be good. Sure, but you know, Father Time is inevitably undefeated. What do we do? Harry's if, also a really good blocker. You mentioned you kind of took a, a, a shot there at the beginning with the tight end. This what if uh, point five? But he is a good blocker. He's an okay blocker. He got better every year, and yeah. I think he I think That's, he topped out. I think he's okay. He's pretty good. Um, but there's room for improvement. But the Patriots will surely improve. He's a big bodied fella. What do you What do you make of that? Like what What if What if Tom leaves? How do you feel about what if Tom like? Tom Brady leaves. I love I love the fit right now. Tom Brady leaves, and then what happens to Harry? Like I feel like he's not a great separator. He's Tom's going to be good for that. He's going to be able to hit him in a tight window. A lot of NFL throws are in tight windows. Um, but what happens when when Harry's just kind of the lone the lone ranger over there on? I mean, it's a good question. It's a fair fair question to be determined. Obviously. This off, if if something were to happen to Tom Brady right now, it would feel a lot worse than if something would have happened to him two years ago when they still had Jimmy G. Yeah. Um. But I, nobody, no, you know, I didn't know Jimmy G's name before Tom before the Patriots made him famous, and they've they've made the playoffs and did quite well the year that uh, Tom Brady's knee went out. Mm-hmm. Uh. I mean, that's the. I, I think a lot of people are hoping that, that Belichick stays around after Brady just so we can see how this thing plays out. Um, yeah. So, I mean, do I know? I don't have the answers, obviously. And I, but it doesn't worry you. I mean, I, I said, I mean, two well, years ago, we were talking about life after Breeze and life after Brady, and Brady, they're still here. Sure. So they're, they're obviously he going to be 42. They're not getting though. any younger. And, and, you know, is there's not a better magician in the NFL than Tom Brady. 100%. And, you know, like he's he's ridiculous what he one one single step in the pocket makes a world of difference for him and the way they handled themselves through the playoffs was we're going to run this ball down your throat and then at the same time when you're quite sure we're going to run it we throw it and then when you're pretty sure we're passing it we throw it and you know or we we run it and they just they got it done and like Casey said they can win ball games without Tom Brady being electric for fantasy. Right. And so, yes, there you have to and, think about that. But at the same time, like Nikhil Harry uh, got better every year. He was good when he first hit the scene and he's, he was great when he left. And I mean, there's, you know, if he's, uh, if he's not the best separator, he's the best guy to catch the ball when there's two guys hanging on top of him. Yeah, so, you know, those there's, there's definitely a contested. there's a big push in the NFL to get a guy that can be wide open like Cooper Cup all the time, 
Um, but there's also times when you just need to be able to throw it to a guy who's going to push somebody down and catch it. Yeah, like I said, I mean, definitely a contested catch champion. I think the guy uh, fits fits well with what the Patriots are trying to do. They're trying, while the rest of the league is getting smaller, uh, we talked about this before, um, the rest of the league is getting smaller. The Patriots are going the opposite direction and getting these big guys who and, and some versatility in a different direction with the, with the bigger players and being able to body up and post up and 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 do a lot of different things and i think harry fits fits that mold perfectly um but i like i said i we we do talk we have talked about life after breeze and life after brady and you know we worried about michael thomas before i'm not worried about michael thomas now i know michael thomas can play in the league i don't really care who's throwing it to him i know he can get open in nfl caliber competition i i just worry that when brady goes away regardless of i mean obviously they could pick up a free agent quarterback who and, and crush it with him or maybe Stidham's the guy but it's not having Tom back there makes me feel a whole lot less confident in a guy like Nikhil Harry who one I'm just not 100% sure is going to be able to be as effective at this level when everyone's maybe a little bit more up on his level of competition um that's yeah, good points I mean it's definitely something to but a lot of people don't everyone everyone see he's great with the ball in his hands um but you got to get there and he's got to get the separation and I think Tommy can do that but I worry about other quarterbacks and I mean McDaniels is a great schemer and he's yeah and and there's a lot of I mean obviously draft Twitter is 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 an intent entity in itself at this point but when you look around the overwhelming majority of people think it's Josh Jacobs and Nikhil Harry in the in the tier at the one 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 two flip-flop however you know so you don't and this is our home league and it, every league is different and all the people listening to this has a different league and everybody feels differently but I think it the for the most part Nikhil Harry carries a certain amount of asset value yeah well and I think that was so the best it's a part. safe pick you yeah know? I think that was the best and part was what you led most with. people that might be trying to trade you for Nikhil Harry aren't even thinking about the what you've just talked about right and maybe he's maybe but uh, maybe in a year we look at him like a bigger juju or a, a slow or, or, or an ineffective space maker that's, that's not getting it done. And and if Tom Brady goes away, he loses a ton of value. Yeah. Or like you said, maybe he becomes a Michael Thomas type. We're like, well, when Tom Brady's gone, Nikhil Harry's awesome and we'll figure it out. Yeah. Well, you know? I, I, but I don't know the answer to that. I like, uh, I like what you, like you said, I like, I like what you let off with, with, you don't he doesn't really need to see the field and and the perceived value on him is awesome so you can kind of if this team needed to he could move he could take Nikhil and do something else with him get him on his team and and move him around probably could do the same thing with most of the other running backs but more than not a lot of people who they're listening to or what they're coming up with on their own is Harry you know being the the top end of things so I I, I can I, I can I can smell what you're cooking Right. To finish um, that off, if you're at the one two right now and J Josh Jacobs is gone, there's a lot better chance that somebody in your league that some people in your league will doubt the David Montgomery and that some people in your league will say, well, the Eagles run three running backs. No matter. You know what I mean? Like right. you got a lot. If you, and if and you, on the if other you, hand, somebody will love those other two guys that you're talking about. But, mo you know, most people are going to like Harry. Agreed. You got a lot better chance of doing. You got more flexibility taking Harry here at one two for your asset. I think. Yeah, I I, I like that idea. Um, it's a it's a solid solid logic, and I can't argue with the value that he has and that he should continue to have moving forward, at least for the short term. And he's very versatile in the contested catch arena and the yak. He had six yards after catch per completion. Wow, twelve hundred eighty seven, and he was durable. He played. On pretty much every game, and 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 the college dominator in the uh, breakout age, breakout age, or right where you wanted to be, if that's and what you're it was into. A good combine. All that being said, there are a decent amount of negatives that I could throw out there. We're we're pretty much out of time on this pick. I I wouldn't take Nikhil Harry here at two overall, um, but I think we're going to take that sort of discussion over to Patreon. Yeah. For the sake of time here, is uh, would you take Nikhil Harry here, Case? Um, I, I mean, I like I like the theory that Big Co pitched there, so I, I'm okay with that. He is pretty wide receiver needy, but I, I very, um, very wide very. receiver needy. But you can always take a running back and turn him into like two wide receivers if That's you want to. That's a good point. It's true. Point. I don't know. You'll have to find out on Patreon what I, how I really feel. All right. Well, there's a plug. <laughs> Let's move along. Giddy up! With I'm the, on the clock with the third pick. In the FF Dynasty's rookie mock it up before you fuck it up, 2019 version. I wasn't telling you to 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 speed up the 
the words. I don't just speed up the telling me <laughs> what we were doing. We're doing it. All right. Mock it up. So before you fuck it up, well, I don't think I fuck this one up. We can fox together. Um, <laughs> so I'm picking for practice here. He uh, Another terrible team name. <laughs> He had no chance of winning the one one. Not sure how he even got past. I think I think he actually beat me in the in the first round of the playoffs. Maybe <laughs> no, he might have had a bye. I don't I don't exactly remember. I really shit the bed the first round of the playoffs. But he's got Deshaun Watson um, and Leonard Fournette, and then AJ Green. And then other than that, his team is pretty depleted of. And by playoffs, you mean the loser bowl, the loser bracket. Right. Well, when you when you have when you start off with the quarterback in a one quarterback league. Yeah, that's not good. Well, that was that's his prize possession right now because his, his running backs are C.J. Anderson, which he picked up on the waiver wire, Leonard Fournette, which he probably spent a decent amount of money on, Lamar Miller, which great he, off season. He may have he may have overpaid for Lamar Miller, Chris Thompson, which probably paid too much for him too, Zach Zenner, which that was a free agent pickup, I'm sure, <laughs> Kelvin Benjamin, which. Not sure why he still hasn't won his team. Wheels fell off over there. Well, I mean, he had a great off season. Tyreek Hill could be. I don't. I don't know if he's going <laughs> to. I don't know if he's going to stick around with the Chiefs or still not. On the Chiefs roster, he's got Robert I Foster, Chris Hogan, D. Jax, Isaiah McKenzie, which I'm not even. And Tim Patrick. How do you have those guys on your team? Um, Does have AJ Sharp. Green on the IR? Yeah, he has. He has AJ Green on the IR, and then MVS, which he had a nice off season because the Packers didn't draft anybody. Um, so he could really use whatever you got. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. have that. Um, I'll he, take two. He might be a candidate for for maybe trade down, but he's he he needs a he needs a good player right here. So and we can't trade. So I'm going to take David Montgomery uh, with the one three here in this exercise. We can't trade. He he could trade he, this pick. Yeah, it's not yeah. a league. It's not it's a not, rule of the league. A, it's not a Russian. No league. trading. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a communist league, yeah. um, but I'm going to take David Montgomery. He's my favorite running back. I think he's a plug and play guy, ready to roll. Obviously, uh, Josh Jacobs is really good too. Um, but as far as he goes, according to PFF, since they've been doing the PFF College, no other running back has forced more than a hundred missed tackles in a season, and David Montgomery's done it twice. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, so that just kind of speaks to what kind of a player David Montgomery is, in my opinion. Um, there wasn't a great offensive line, hence why he was probably having to do, you know, so much. Um, some people say he does too much, which he definitely does too much at times, which in the next level could be a little bit of a uh, little bit of an issue. But I think it was just out of necessity. Yeah. When you're taking fire. Right. You might as well die. When, when those rounds are live. You got to, <laughs> yeah. you know, you got to make something happen. Um, but he's he's just uh, in my opinion, this guy's a stud. David, Mon- he'll be 22 in the summer. And in this summer, he's an Eagle Scout. I mean, come on, who's an Eagle Scout? <laughs> who's an Eagle Scout? Um, 5'11", 216. I like that. 71 career uh, total receptions. Love that. Um, just refuses to go down. Got a f- physically and kind of mentally both aspects of 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 life. Nothing's gonna get this guy down. He's gonna outwork you. He's gonna be first one in, last one out. He's gonna work out on weekends right. while you're out he's hollering gonna, at women. He's out bench pressing, and like, he's getting his teammates in there working right. out too because so it's infectious. They were saying that like he was the culture changer at Iowa State. Like he came in there and really just changed everything that was going on in there. But he's an infectious guy. Just worked hard. Wanted to be really good. Um, this guy's got everything you want. He's got solid hands. He's Really he's, good at coming out of the backfield. He can line up in the slot if you need him to. He's ranked number one overall in drop rate. 0.0% drop rate. I don't know if that means he had zero drops, but it sounds like he had zero <laughs> drops. For some reason, PFF won't give you college running back drops. They'll give you wide receiver drops, right? but they'll give you the drop rate percentage. Mm. And he's ranked one. Mm-hmm. Pretty strong stat. So he's pretty, got balance. Pretty, pretty strong. He's got balance. He's got patience. His lateral quickness is off the charts, obviously, with... All those evaded tackles. Fourth in elusive rating on PFF. He uh, he can create on it on his own, and I mean, please give him somewhere to go, and the guy will certainly do his own do his thing. And I think the the landing spot where where he ended up for me was awesome. Um, I know some people will Chicago. talk about you know maybe it's a little crowded over there. Obviously, Mike Davis is there, but I 
we talked about it on a Patreon show, I believe, about how the Bears didn't need anything. So mm-hmm. for me, I was kind of in, in camp of you should try to get what you can for Mike Davis because on a team that doesn't really need anything and and who clearly wants to have playmakers on the offensive side of the ball and Jordan Howard getting traded out of there. The writing was, it was on the it wall. Was an easy, it was an easy pick for them to make because their defense is pretty good, because they have weapons everywhere else. And it seemed the one spot where they could maybe use a pick-me-up. And I feel like that they saw this guy hanging around. And they said when he came in for the visit, he left. And then it was like Costanza when he left the clock, or hit, hit his uh, thing at somebody's house so he could come back. He just <laughs> gets in your head. Costanza. <laughs> they said he just grows on you. The guy, you, you just thinking about Mo- David Montgomery. Um, just I think he's going to fit right in in this offense. Uh, obviously you have Tariq Cohen, which could be a worry for, for some people, but I don't see it taking too much away from what David Montgomery can do. Last year, you saw Howard have right around 300 snaps, 297. He had 250 attempts, 935 yards, nine touchdowns, and 20 for 26. He also had zero drops, by the way, Jordan Howard. Um, 20 for 26 with the hands and 145 yards and zero TDs. Cohen's not a guy who's going to come in here and take too many handoffs away from what David Montgomery has. Now, will Mike Davis mix in? I'm sure Mike Davis will mix in some. It's not like every team just goes out there and it's only two backs, and this is what they do. He's also a rookie. Um, So I I think Mike Davis will mix in there, but I think they want Montgomery of a guy who they don't have to do any. They can leave Montgomery on the field, and we can bring Tariq Cohen in, and we'll do other things. And every once in a while, maybe we take him off and just put Cohen in there. But I think he's perfect for this offense because he can do everything they want. Like he can he can be your bell cow, and he can be a slot receiver if you need him to be. Like, sure. I love it. Um, I he was my favorite running back coming in. I want to own as much Montgomery as I can own. Uh, I love the landing spot, and I'm all in on David Montgomery. I like it. I like it a lot. I mean, I th- you talk about Mike Davis. Obviously, I'm a Gamecock. I, I can tell you that Mike Davis is a very versatile running back. They probably cited that when they signed him in free agency, but it's just like two years ago when we said that the Vikings grabbed Latavius Murray in free agency. Like you don't know exactly where you're going to come out with the running with, with, with out of the draft. It was great yeah. insurance, for you the, know, great, for the Bra- great insurance Bears to pick up Davis is a great, 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 move. great move. That's, and it happened again last year with another team. And we cited Latavius Murray's pick up to the Vikings last that last year before they drafted Dalvin Cook. And, you know, so this is great insurance. They didn't pay him a whole lot, but he's decently paid just because the running backs get nothing anyway. Um, yeah, I'm – Yeah, I mean – Mike Davis – The can, Browns took uh, Hyde and then drafted yeah, got, Chubb. Got, that was a similar got one. Harley, got, got Hyde cheap, still paid him a lot for a running back because right. most well, running backs lot, get paid nothing. A lot more than Mike Davis. Everyone was like, well, Mike Davis is going to – he's making a lot of money. It was just $1.3 million. Right. Like, That's, I mean, kickers yeah, make more than that. Yeah, like I get it. You're, it's a, it's a lot for a running back. That. But at the end of the day, if $1.3 million sitting on your bench for most of the games, you'll nobody be gives all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll be all right. Yeah, the cap's I, at like a billion, so who yeah. cares? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, I like it. I like I like the pick when they grab Mike Davis. Like He's a very versatile player. That he can do what they want him to do, what they want out of a running back, but Montgomery does it a lot better. Yeah. A lot better. And so that's that's And he's a, cheap as hell. And he's cheap. <laughs> and so that's I think that's a really good call by what the way you set all that up. And I like the you know, you Eagle Scout, contagious, uh got people to work out over there on a Friday night and Saturday night instead of going out and trying to find some trouble. His offensive you know? coordinator calling the greatest human ever. Right. All the, you know, all that, all that is, 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 is quote extra, yeah. you know, that's right. icing on the cake to, right. to the elusive rating and to the, yeah, the, the guys missed tackles forced and all that good his stuff. His body bend and elati- elasticity is mm. tremendous. But bring it back over to where he's at on the bears. All right. So they have Tariq Cohen, but Kareem Hunt was doing work with Tyreek Hill on the field and Cohen is just a running back version of Tyreek Hill in the same offense and the same spread the way they're going to run it obviously Trubisky's not Mahomes yet and he may not ever be Mahomes but the and the but like you said the going into the draft the Bears didn't have any need they said they didn't need a running back and they traded up to get one and made sure that as soon as the I think maybe he, maybe he was picked right after Miles Sanders did that happen the Eagles took Miles Sanders and then Montgomery was right after it, it something like third, that he was a third it was like they bang, traded up for him okay it it was it was bang bang and the a couple Eagles of, took uh, Miles Sanders at two the twenty first pick in the second round then Daryl Henderson was the third running back off the board. 
Right uh, at the top of the third. The sixth pick in the third yeah. round. And then three picks later was David Montgomery at 3 9. Okay. All right. Trade yeah. up. I got you. I got you. Yeah, trade up. And and we'll get to the we'll get to the Daryl Henderson, Rams, Todd Gurley stuff because that's a big deal. Um but I for the Bears, I love the pick. Like I think Casey we were, it was on the Patreon show, but it was it was really Casey really hit the nail on the head. They had a very complete roster after the Raiders did him some favors. And and then also to the to the point there, they you don't have you gave away all your picks for Khalil Mack. And then, so you, it's not like a luxury pick because you don't really have that many picks, but then you go ahead and put it on Montgomery because you know what you're doing offensively. You have a plan in place and this guy can, can fits your mold. Exactly. It's going to come right in and they've welcomed the whole, everybody's heard this by now. I'm sure they've welcomed the cream hunt comparisons. Hey, if you want to say this guy's like cream hunt, go ahead. It's cool. That's why we drafted him. So I'm all aboard the David Montgomery train. I said when we when we all fair before we got started, I'd made the Nikhil Harry pick at one two. If that was my team, I'm taking David Montgomery. That's just I'll sign up for a little bit more. Not that I think it's a gamble. I don't, but I think that the solid the the solid asset value that Nikhil Harry gives you, I get that. I'm welcoming more yeah. gamble in my life. And I'll take David Montgomery. Right. And I think if it if it booms, it's going to be a really big boom. Right. And we always that's <laughs> Jay Wayne said it's a running back show like. Yeah. There's only so much boom that a wide receiver can even make to differentiate himself from another good wide receiver in fantasy because there's so many good wide receivers out there. And the more I, I've been calling this for years and every year I get, I get more right. The more wide open these offenses get, look at what is about to happen in Arizona. The more wide open these offenses get, the easier it's going to be to come up with two or three wide receivers to start every week. And the harder it's going to be every week to get a running back to start. And with da if David Montgomery hits – He's going to be almost priceless in that offense, the way they spread people out. And if Tariq Cohen is out there running around on the edges, making defensive coordinators, giving them fits, and you got a running back that you can't even tackle, and he can catch, and he can run routes, and he can run up and line up in the slot or pass out wide. Protect. You know, great pass like, protector. I think it's a great pick for the great Bears who protector. already took themselves to the playoffs. Right. And and moving forward in a system that the quarterbacks barely make him do, he he – Trubisky crushed it with his legs last year as he was trying to learn this system. Right. And if they go, if he takes a step forward, these Bears are going to be so hard to beat because their defense is nasty and they got playmakers everywhere. Yeah. Great pick for the Bears. Yeah. I mean, all, the only knock on the guy is that he's he, the testing wasn't great and he's not super fast and the three cone wasn't great. So I don't really care. He, I don't I, think he I, ran a three cone. I, I saw what he can do on the field while playing against people. This guy can play. He's ready to go. Um, yeah, he he won't be denied. He's not gonna he's not gonna bust. Like you give him a he, decent offensive line and a good scheme and a, right. and, a, and you a don't man, have, get good decent man game managing quarterback. I'll, just call Trubisky that, um, and and we're ready to go. I think, like I said, two hundred and fifty attempts for Howard last year. I think you could see a little bit more for for uh, David Montgomery right off the rip, and I've, you're gonna see more catches mm -hmm. for sure. Um, so if you could yeah, tell me that I could get take three, him off the field. even if you only get the three hundred snaps that Howard had. If you could tell me my guy's going to get 300 snaps, a chance at some decent touchdowns, and uh, and let's just say 40 catches, I'm in. So For sure. It seems like a no-brainer. I think it's a consensus agreement here at the FF Dynasty. Let's move along. With the fifth pick in the FF Dynasty's 2019 rookie mock it up before you fog it up. I'm on the clock. It's me. Everyone's on their phone. We started the segment, so I had to do it myself. I it's introduced not, myself. It's not your team. You're on the team. You're on the clock for somebody else. I am on the clock for someone else. Thank goodness. RVA kickers, another bad name. Just a bunch of we call this league the bad name league. I don't know what RVA even stands for. RVA. Maybe it's like Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, it's something to do with whatever area he lives in. Really bad. Come on, Kevin. Hmm. Come on, sure guy. Pull it out. All right. So I mean. I looked at this guy's team and he he's pretty he's sitting pretty good at running back. He's got Nick Chubb, he's got Dalvin Cook. And that's about it. So maybe he's not sitting great at running back, but he does have <laughs> he does have Jarek McKinnon sitting on the IR, so that that's going to come in and help him. He's he's kind of hurting in the wide receiver range. He's got Julio Jones and then he's got some other fillers, some other wide receiver three swings and Geronimo Allison, who I like. I like Geronimo. Don't want to depend on him, but I like him. Don't want to depend on J John Brown, but I like him. He's got Kiki. Kiki's a good stab. Don't want to depend on him, though. 
All that being said, I, I don't think that I could take a wide receiver here. I really wanted to. My heart. He also has no uh, tight ends, really. He's got. It's yeah. I don't know Kaseki how. Kaseki and Swain, which I like Kaseki, you know, as a nice buy, buy low candidate right now. But how's oh, yeah. that your only tight ends? In a tight end premium league? Right. That's so, just messing it up. Well, because for some reason he's got Jimmy G, Dak Prescott, and Russell Wilson on his team. Thought Maybe he thought it was super flex. I don't know. <laughs> he's got Lamar maybe, Jackson, too. So. Maybe nope. he thought it was super flex. <laughs> he, it's he, definitely not super flex. It was an auction where you had a bunch of players on the board at one time, and he texted me that he accidentally won Russell Wilson and Jimmy G at the same time. Well, not at the same second, but like he yeah. actually he, he was winning. He then, messed and no around brought, and got yeah. to be top bid on two quarterbacks. And everyone was like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Left him hanging. Yeah, so his lack of tight end definitely I mean, I took a while on the clock to make this pick. Uh I felt bad about it because we're we're trying to move this thing along. We're texting in picks uh as we as we go through this first round and I just I was like, for uh, forever, I wanted to take Hawkinson because of his tight end situation, but and, and then my heart didn't want to take the running back here. But then when I look at it, like there's this is the last running back to take. I went Miles Sanders, mm -hmm. and I, I like Miles. Sanders. Kind of have to. I, feel I like. think so. It's, I, I think a lot of people feel it's a top four. Um, yep. But keep going, Jay. A lot of people really like uh, Miles Sanders, which definitely plays into the value, right? A lot of Absolutely. people like Harry. So you're 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 not gonna lose a lot of value in taking these guys in the top four here. Right. Moving forward, at least until the season starts for sure. So we preach a lot of like trying to trade back, and I'd be down to trade out of this pick. But if I was forced to make Ooh. the pick, I'd have to take Miles Sanders. He's just the last running back available in a good situation. It was really a bummer for this class where everybody else ended up. But there's a lot of things to like about Miles Sanders. Sure. I don't I don't dislike him all altogether. I think he's obviously got all the metrics you could want. There's there's speed and agility there. He looks twitchy when he's out there. I think he's a pretty capable wide receiver. Some people hate. He yeah. was he did rank 50th in the drop rate as com compared to, you know, David Montgomery who was ranked first in like that being good, like you had a small drop rate, mm -hmm. right? So he was the 50th best. Uh but I mean when you watch him I only saw one drop on in watching in all the, the film tape. that's available. Right, I mean we don't get everything, uh, and so and then he went he went pretty high. He's got he's got your draft capital as far as this class's wide or running backs go, and then Philly could be a good spot for him. I'm not like sold. I'm not like oh my gosh, Philly's the best landing spot ever. He's the one one. Like I don't feel like th it's clear they like a committee. I mean we we had this argument off air like Jay Ajayi never got more than. I think we talked Fifth, about it on Patreon. Do we talk about it on week? Patreon? We talked about how Jay Ajayi, even at, at his peak of being an Eagle, never got more than 15 carries, and I think only five times went over double digits in carries. They're out there with a slew of running backs. And so I, and the, the issues that I have with with Miles Sanders are things I, I think might prevent him from, from being able to take over a three-down role on this team. Uh, I... I don't know that he's that polished of a runner. I feel like he's pretty raw. Uh, the consistency would be my biggest thing. It's like he looks really good when he can plant that foot and get north and south, but he doesn't really like to do that. He looks good when he does it, and he can yeah, I do agree. it. But he doesn't really want to do that. I think he wants to. I think he wants to Marlon Mack it to the outside. He's got a little bouncing tendency. But he does have amazing lateral agility, and he's obviously athletically off the charts, and he was the number one running back coming out of high school. Right. And so he's always won athletically, and when you're just that much better than everybody, there's more room to the outside, and you can get around him. So I, I can understand him liking to bounce, the sure. same way Marlon Mack averaged like six yards of carry bouncing. Yeah. Right? He was successful but, doing it, but that doesn't work in the NFL. Marlon mm -hmm. Mack since and he has. seemingly he's, figured it he's out. He's figured it out. And the Eagles have a good offensive line. That's true, and, and they, they added to it. Right, they they addressed it right off the rip. They've got a good offense. They've got a good play caller. Uh, so I mean, it it's I'm back and forth with it. I struggled with it. I also don't know, you know, Matt. We had Matt Foreman on the show uh, at Fat Mormon. We broke. He he's a he's a homer. He's a Nittany Lion. Big Penn State fan. And he 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 helped us break down Miles Sanders back when we did this pre draft, and and he pointed out the lack of confidence that that he would have in that offensive line because it was pretty bad. The and, Penn State offensive line, right? And which is kind of a reason why he would try to like to bounce it. Uh, I, which I, we said David Montgomery had to dodge bullets, so we can't not say the same thing for Miles Sanders. 
Right. Yeah, but it's it's, a, it's different, a little different. Different watching those two play ball, but for sure. <laughs> and and then I don't I don't love the pass protection from Miles Sanders. I think that I think he does a decent job of getting like first contact on a guy, but he he rarely stands him up and sustains a block. He comes in with the shoulder a little bit too much, and Foreman also had a good rebuttal for that. He didn't have a lot of snaps, right? He stuck behind Saquon Barkley, yeah, his whole career until the last season, and he finally gets to to come out and do his own thing. But he's under the pressure of Saquon. Everybody wants to ask him about Saquon. Everybody wants to think about Saquon. He's out there trying to hurdle everybody. I don't think he should try to hurdle everybody. He almost broke his neck. Like, calm down. <laughs> Fumbled a decent amount. Don't love the fumbling. A lot of fumbles. Let's see. How many did he have? He had eight fumbles. Five all last year. Uh, in only 276 attempts. I think Montgomery had well over 600 attempts and only had three fumbles total. Mm -hmm. So, I, I don't... I'm not in love with it, but I know plenty of people are, and it's a decent enough situation, and he's a decent enough prospect with enough good qualities that I felt basically compelled just to take him here, and I can either sit with him and see what happens, or I can I can trade him. And and the sooner I trade him, I think the less risk you have of losing any value if he, if 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 uh, it's working. I, I think they're going to give him plenty of off season hype all the way through, so right. I think you're ready to go as as long as you need i don't think they're gonna be like yeah we drafted the second round running back and we're gonna committee the shit out of them <laughs> i mean what they're, the, they're gonna come I mean, out and say exactly what if, what they're gonna the, come out and say exactly what they already said how we've been waiting for a guy this like is this what they're Rashad supposed to Tenney say, was right? a first round running back and he got the help, uh committed out I'm, of right, I'm, I'm not i'm not saying that it won't happen i'm saying that they're not it's not they're like not he's gonna, gonna tell you you didn't know nobody knew that rashad penny was not gonna be the guy until he wasn't the guy all of a sudden you were like what the hell's happening here mm -hmm. like you were saying that he might lose value in the i'm saying that like they're gonna continue to hype their guy um i don't think i agree and he might get on the field and become a committee that's what i meant right like you're not going to lose any value until he gets on the field. And then you might not even lose any value there. I mean, you can, you can could, sit with could, Miles Sanders. And it could skyrocket. He's one of the players that you just need, you know, you need you need a player too and that goes his way and everyone will be, oh, look, look, at how, look at how good he is. I told you so, which right. probably will happen because he is a very athletic guy. Yeah. But one, I do worry about uh, a little bit of the committee, but I'll get back to that in a second. Mainly, like, I, I think he is a very athletic player. But when we broke him down, I said the same thing. Like, I think he's an athlete out on the field. He doesn't know how to play the position quite yet. And you were saying that he's raw, and I'm kind of saying the same thing. Like, he hasn't figured out how to be, take all of his skills, hone them down, and use them to play running back. They're just like, here, here's the ball. I'm just going to go be an athlete out on the field right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I think he can be really good. I, I'm just not ready. Like, I would much rather have Montgomery or... um Take Josh it. Jacobs. Yeah, agree. Uh, as far as the running backs go, um, and then on top of it, you know, all the the pe the reason that Sanders got any hype and the train got rolling is because all the other running backs flopped at the combine and he tested really well. And then he went to the Eagles, and we talked about this last week on the Patreon. Like all those same people, the numbers guys, who it's black and white and it's facts and it's this and that all the time, every time, and that's all they ever want to tell you is Staunch. this. Here's the percentages of this and here's the percentages of that. Well, the percentages of the Eagles having a one guy do all the work is not great, but now your guy is in a situation that you want him to be good and usually coach speak is like the worst thing ever, but you guys are retweeting shit that because the GM said this is the guy we've been waiting for. Now it's okay. So it's like you guys can flip your narratives however you want. Like I, I'm going to take a wait and see approach with a guy like Miles Sanders, partially because I am a little scared of him and I'm confirmation biasing the other direction, just like everybody who liked him is confirmation biasing him in the direction that they want to see him. Like, yeah. oh, well, of course, he's it's not going to be a comedian anymore. They never had a guy like Miles Sanders. Well, I mean, <laughs> is Jay Ajayi <laughs> not as good of a running back as – as uh, Miles, Miles Sanders. Sanders was. I, I don't really know, but I would like to say I would imagine they're not super far off of each other. Yeah. Like, So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens here. But And I, I don't dislike Miles Sanders a ton. I don't mean to, to come out here, but it's just funny that the numbers guys who are always, these are facts and this and that. Well, the facts are that the Eagles don't use one running back. And you guys are all in all of a sudden because of some coach speak. And well, he's the guy and now they're not going to use. They haven't had a guy. And it's just <laughs> all right. It's just fun to see you guys on the other side of this thing. Sure. It's usually black and white and the facts are the facts. And hey. there's no way I'm wrong because I figure I, I put together a percentage that said this and there's no way I could be wrong. Yeah. Well, it so. is fun to be on the coach speak side. Welcome, y'all. 
Love some and I'm not, coach speak. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. it is what it is at this point, but I, I just think it's fun. I like it. All right. Well, should we... Uh, is the commissioner coming up to the podium here? With the fifth pick. I can't do the, I can't do the Berman. <laughs> Trying to go Berman on us? I'm not as good at it. The Bills it as haven't you picked are. yet. Yeah. <laughs> Circle the wagon. Nobody circles the <laughs> wagons. <laughs> <laughs> like the Buffalo Bills. All right. It's not the Bills. What are we doing here? It's the uh it's the Hebrew Hammers. They're on the clock. The Hebrew it's Hammers. It's me. I'm on the clock. All right, here we go. So we had to switch up uh five and six so the Casey and Big Co don't have to pick for their own team. It's the theme we're doing here we're, as we're mocking up this uh home league that we have tight end premium non-super flex of course yeah because casey's got the next pick and then i'm behind him so so the hebrew hammers up. you're on the clock case what you got all right so obviously the running backs are gone here yep just took um, the last one i'm gonna run through his team real quick uh he's got cousins and stafford and then the running backs is is where he really needs some help he's got peyton barber and rojo which you know you got the combo platter but who the hell knows what that's going to be he's got Kenyon drake and balage so you got the Another combo, combo platter. Got the combo platter there, which, you know, it's, it's all it's all well and good. But other than that, like, not much going on here. He's got Rashard Penny, so you need that to to blossom for you. Elijah McGuire is worthless. He's got Jalen Rashard, so he could maybe squeeze another pick out of the Josh Jacobs owner here. Mm-hmm. Um, but And the receivers are, 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 are solid. He's got Odell. He's got Mike Evans. He's got Galladay. Uh, he's got Calvin Ridley. He's got Lacan Treadwell. Um, Devontae Parker's a stab. Yeah, Parker's like a stab Parker. on there. Moncrief to the to the Steelers, not the worst. Um, and John Ross down there, cheap John Ross. And he's got OJ Howard, so he does have a tight end. This is premium, so you got to start thinking maybe Hawkinson and Fant creep up here for you at, the, at this pick one five. Uh, but Jay Wayne was just talking about his guy being on the clock and you know not really having too much and maybe trading back. If I'm the Hebrew Hammers, I want to try to go up right here and grab one of these backs if, if you know obviously maybe the first three were running backs and it's just harry left at one four but if i'm the ha- if i'm hammers i want to try to get up there and try to work a deal with rva kickers who needs more than just a one one piece and he's in rva kickers just happens to be an eagles fan so maybe if he was on the clock he wouldn't want to trade true and we want to take miles sanders but that's what, a great, uh, what i'm saying is that i want to try to jump back up in here with a team like this to try to get a back that's a great point and if to that point uh, if the first two picks go back, you need to jump into the third pick because you don't know if the third pick's gonna be Harry or the other or the last back. Wait, who? Yeah. <laughs> you don't know Harry. if Harry's gonna be gone. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I like what you said, Casey. And and to build on that is if if this is your type of team where you got some really good receivers and you got some question mark running backs who could really pop and your your starting lineup would be fine, but you're not going to know that until maybe week three, four, five, six. Might as well try to jump in there. If you're this close, you're at one five. Right. You might as well try to jump in there and make a move and maybe just wait it out and take the last one. Or if you want to play, you know, hardball and go up and get, you know, if you get one two, then you have a choice. Theoretically, you might not know who's going one, but it's probably going to be Jacobs. You know what I mean? Right. And he has, you know, s- some parts and pieces here to be able to, to put maybe potentially negotiate a little bit of a deal to to move up with a with you know a player in this pick or something along those lines. All right. Well, for those listening on YouTube, we're we're doing this rookie mock it up. First pick was Josh Jacobs. Second pick was Nikhil Harry. Third pick was David Montgomery. Fourth pick was Miles Sanders. The last back to go off. You right. mentioned needing a back, trying to trade up. We can't do that. Right. You got to so, make the pick. So we're stuck. We're stuck. Who in, you take? We're stuck in purgatory here. <laughs> um, and like I said, he's got OJ Howard. So the so the tight ends, especially in premium, really starting to creep up for me here. I like Fant and I like Hawkinson a, a good bit, just like anybody else. Yep. <laughs> just um, like everybody else out there. <laughs> but how I'm, could you not? I'm gonna just I'm gonna take a swing here for the team that's already loaded at receiver and just try to grab DK Metcalf and load up oh, one yeah. one more potential really good receiver on this team here and then he'd be pretty fluid to do kind of whatever he wants if if dk you know turns into something uh the kalen zakaris of house metcalf <laughs> so that would be his that would be the game of thrones pick um <laughs> <laughs> for sure yeah but so obviously the seahawks landing spot for for some people with metcalf some people are meh some people are a little excited about it some people are really unexcited about it 
I don't see it as a terrible landing spot. I got one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and he's locked up for a while. Um, we've seen. Oh, he just got paid. Yeah. yeah so he, maybe they want to let him, you know, do more work out there. Well, you got you got another year in the same offense, and maybe you 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 spice it up a little bit, and you get him spice it up. Uh, closer to the four hundred attempt range. Um, probably where he should be, but still a good 35 touchdown season and the best interception to TD ratio he's ever had in his career uh, for, ba- or not, for for Russell Wilson. And, and obviously Doug Baldwin, the loss of Doug Baldwin is big for the team, didn't play a ton last year. But other than that, it's basically Tyler Lockett left on the team who probably will most likely slide into a Doug Baldwin role. I know they drafted the West Virginia uh, player Jennings to maybe potentially hope slide into a slot role but you never know yeah. w- w- what's going to go on there just like you don't really nobody knows what's going to go on with dk it's a house divided it's it's you're either all in or you're completely off not too many people are i'm pretty down the middle on them i'm i'm okay with buying a ticket to the show here um and there, obviously it's coach speak and this and that but the reviews have been awesome oh, I love them over these last couple of days don't know where I that three cone drill came saw from. videos of him running cone drills and doing stuff he looks pretty fluid to me he's huge he's fast you can't jam him because he's going to eat you up and if you give him any cushion he's going to eat that cushion and go past you um so he's, he is pretty hard to guard there's a limited route tree that that is the big issue and the stiffness and the three cone um carol said he didn't see any issue didn't 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 see why there would be an issue with any sort of a route tree we've talked about it when we covered him i, I don't think with a guy like dk you need an extensive route tree you can Calvin Johnson pretty much won on three or four routes. A guy like, not saying he's Calvin Johnson, but a guy like DK can win on three or four routes. He just needs to come across the field, go up the field, and run a comeback and real and a screen here or there. And that's, that's really it. all you need. Like, you don't need this extensive route tree, but they were saying that they didn't think it was going to be an issue. Um, and, you know, I'm, I, I don't love DK, but I also don't hate DK. And at the fifth pick here, I'll, I'll, I'll swing for the fences on you know, one of the bigger freak athletes we've seen in a while. Um, Some people will hate the pick and some people will love the pick. It's just how DK goes. What do you guys think? One more thing. Like basically the, the, what I see here is, is worst case scenario is you you had David Moore there last year. Um, I I don't see, obviously you don't want, if David Moore, you don't want DK to have the David Moore like season, but I could see him being a, a souped up, bigger, better version of kind of what David Moore did last year. Even if DK was just like, eh, we didn't really get what we wanted. Like he was basically a deep threat guy who had 53 targets, caught 26 of them for five touchdowns. Um, so you could you could see him in like a David Moore role, even if he was like, didn't really pan out how they, you know, kind of pictured DK panning out. I think you could be a little souped up version of David Moore kind of right off the rip for him if he needed some some uh, some time to, to figure it out. Uh, but I think he could come in and be there, be their big time number one big ticket item. Uh, and I think that's kind of what they see as well. They're excited. They traded up to get DK. So why not? Yeah, I, I love this pick. Uh, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty in on DK Metcalf. Like, why not? Why not take the swing? I mean, he's definitely the best against press coverage. You can't jam him, and he's so fast and he's so big. Like, this is going to translate to the NFL, if you ask me. He's gonna get behind defenses. And he's going to score touchdowns. And if he, I think if, if he has the same season as David Moore, it's going to do a lot more for him than it did for Moore because you're going to see him more splashed and, and scored some deep touchdowns. Well, that's, if, that's kind of what I was hearing. He, he averaged 17.1 yards of reception right. with David Moore. So yeah. that's kind of what I, you know. All DK has to do is catch a few long bombs, and you're going to be like, oh, man, look what that guy can do on an NFL field. And this is why they drafted him, and this is what scores points in the NFL. I, 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 can, I, I get it. Uh, one of the knocks that you didn't mention was was his drops. Had had a lot of drops. Uh, well, seven, but only sixty seven receptions. Uh, his drop rate was one hundred and thirty first. So not a good, not a good drop rate. But there's a lot of spectacular catches that go into his tape. And then the fact that he can get behind defenses is is, is enough for me. Uh, and I, if Doug Baldwin, it sounds like he's going to be out of there. I mean, he's definitely not the same player if he does come back. And he's it sounds like it's already a done deal. He's just holding out so he doesn't have to eat the, the yeah. cap money that or the signing bonus. That he's going to make him fire him versus quitting. Yeah. Smart. Get mm-hmm. you get your money, Doug. All right. Uh, but also, I'm, I'm down if you want to retire and want to take care of your body. I understand that. And that sounds like he's a smart dude. It sounds like he wants to. He doesn't need money. He didn't. He, he's not. 
And I mean, the Seahawks, sure good. Seahawks haven't necessarily had a big outside presence. He's probably like a DK barely could physically be. responsible, and and my heart is sad right. if, if Dougie walks away. Ah, yeah. No Super doubt, sad. no doubt, no doubt. Um, but but it does leave a glaring hole for the Seahawks. Right, and, and they're paying Russell so much money, you'd think that they're going to maybe let him throw it a little bit more. Sure. Well, in the rookie drafts, I mentioned it when we were talking about Nikhil Harry versus the... Wait, who? The, <laughs> I just don't know how long I'm going to get to use this. Uh, as it, you know, like a safer asset value at one two, Nikhil Harry versus if it was my team, I'd take David Montgomery. That's your negotiation all the way through the rookie drafts. I mean, that's really what you look at. I mean, every once in a while, there's a player who's, you know, most of the time it's the, the first pick. Like there's a Saquon Barkley and then there's everybody else type of thing. Um, but once you get past the probable safe top three running backs that have a situation or were drafted into a spot where you think obviously Josh Jacobs first rounder and you know dude just got hurt other people aren't even on the team they just brought back Doug Martin because Crowell got hurt and and what's his name retired Marshawn Lynch once you get past those types of situations I feel like pick five six seven eight fairly interchangeable what 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 is your spice what you know? How do you? What's your palate? What you tasting? What you feeling like? I don't personally. I can feel it down in my plum. Exactly. What's your plum, What's your plums feeling like? My plums aren't like I'm not. I'm not in love with DK Metcalf. You're but not I trading can, your Twinkie for DJ DK Metcalf plums. I'm, I'm not necessarily trying to get rid of my Twinkie for DK, but I can see everything you just said. The big one of the things is the holes on the wide receiver core are very obvious for Seattle. Tyler Lockett played great last year and and just what Casey said like and and it wasn't it, in the playoff game when Seattle went down they lost the game running the ball like everybody was screaming throw the ball you got one of the best quarterbacks in the league you should open him up a little bit more Tyler Lockett was the most efficient long ball catcher in the league last year and some people could take that and run it back the other way and say well it's because they pounded the rock and we made a lot of Casey in particular brought you all the specifics last year coming in actually about this time coming in pretty much nailed that one yeah talking about their (laughs) re you know the the running game and the way they were going to set it up and all that good stuff I don't know if anybody imagined that they that the Seahawks would let Russell Wilson throw it less than any quarterback in the league and that was a bummer for for fantasy points all around unless you had Chris Carson but I think that this does I think it's a really good pick for Seattle I think it there's plenty of room for popping and being a really good fantasy play. Um, it's not my spice. It's not what I want to put on my plate at one five. So but this I is can, not who you would take here. No, I think there's plenty. I, I mean, I could. I, I think. Save I could, it. Save it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Save it. They just brushed me off the plate with a high heat. Yeah, I could saw, I see you loading you up a it. name there. Yeah. Just save it. Oh, I could look at the list. I mean, there's. I think you could easily plug in. Obviously, we don't know the future here, so I think you could easily plug in a Paris Campbell, Debo Samuel. Uh, AJ, DK Metcalf is here for a reason. You could plug in TJ Hawkinson. Who knows? You may, be, you may need to be taking Fant over Hawkinson when it's all said and done because Flacco loves tight ends, and that's the way – there's so many – there's so many who knows what this pick needs to be from pick five on – and there's a there's a actually there's a couple of really good viable options and it's it's going to take a season and in dynasty it could take three seasons to really tell you what but I don't mind the DK Metcalf pick it wouldn't have been my pick but I, there's all the potential in the world and it's good what's interesting is is you know a couple months ago it was he was supposed to be like a top 10 pick and then the Seahawks get him at the end of the second round so they still got just as much upside as they ever had and they had to put in a lot less into him to give it a ride, to give it a shot and see if it works. And now, if you want to be on pro side of DK, my man's on every commercial now from that ESPN shot of him crying on the phone saying, why y'all wait too long, so long to take me? Oh, if that's it, what did it for me. You know what I mean? That was the, that like, was the breaker here. I th- already th- had that's your my tipping point for it. You know? And I heard him cry. You sound know, like a little girl. He was uh, he was you know, very emotional. Because Doriel Green Beckham wasn't crying when he got drafted. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, well, exactly. Like DK was a top ten, a top fifteen pick for a long time, and even going in the last year before he got hurt, it was like DK Metcalf's the best wide receiver prospect coming into the. He's going. He's the you know him. I don't like was the belt there, that they wear. Over he there, was up but. there with Nikhil Harry. You know, it was DK Metcalf, and then he hurt his neck, and he missed. You know, like every time 
well, he he wasn't hurt. He was that top Debbie ranked wide receiver, and he's been number one. We talk about that type of stuff all the time. Like he's been, you talk, you talk about Miles Sanders being the top recruited player. He's been good enough to bounce outside and win. He hasn't necessarily had to run up the middle too much and make it happen and learn some of those lanes and learn how to use some of his blocks because he can just get Zero, out of people's way. Zero slot reception. Now DK DK goes into the second round, which is great for most of the people in this draft and great for all the people that got drafted in the third round. They would have loved to have been in a second into the second round, but this man had his hopes were up. His hopes got dashed. He cried. He's on the commercials. He's all, you know, like if anybody's going to work harder than they were going to work, it's probably DK Metcalf. So I can see all of the luster here. I can see the potential. I would probably play it a little bit different here, but I don't, I can't argue with the pick. It's just, it's not my taste. All right, we'll find out who you would have taken. We're going to take that over to Patreon. We're going to have a nice uh, recap session over there about any of the differences that we had throughout this uh, first round, and we're going to continue to do that through this mock it up. On, on one more uh, coach speak kind of note here. All right. He uh, he did go see Jerry Sullivan in, in the uh, through the winter months here who is – Kind of like the uh, the route running wide receiver guru. He's seventy four years old and did a lot of work with Anquan Bolden and Larry Fitzgerald and all those kind of guys. And uh, Pete Carroll was was you know really praising the work that he did there and and Took really shirt off. really did some uh, did some good things uh, in in that category. Um, so and if well if there's anyone that I want to listen to less about talk about a player, it's pretty much Pete Carroll, but. <laughs> You love you love to hear all the good stuff. Yeah, well, I mean that's an actual fact. He, right, he I'm not did saying do he did, that. I know. I'm not, <laughs> he I'm not saying that. He went to the camp. He went to the guy. I'm yeah. not saying he, he didn't. I, I more meant how um, good so they, he looked. He just in worked camp. on a lot of nuances and how to run routes and how to try to make every route kind of look the same when you're coming out of things and and just work on a lot of little little things uh, with DK and said said it went really well. So. Yeah, I think I think Calvin Johnson is this dude's ceiling. He's the closest whoa, spe- physical whoa, specimen that we've whoa, come to. Whoa, he's the closest physical specimen that we've had close to Calvin Johnson. And if this dude is is a humble kind of guy who wants to work hard, look out. And I'm not saying he's gonna be that guy, but I'll take a swing at one five. Calvin Johnson didn't run a three cone. He didn't run. He it already at all. knew what it was. Like DK Smart should not have ran not the run three run cone. He he probably if he wouldn't have ran the three cone. Everyone might have been a first round. Everyone wouldn't be saying yeah. He, nobody would be saying shit right now. Got to know not to run that thing. Well, yeah, we'll that learn was, from that. That was stupid. All right, yeah. the commission's in the air. We have more DK Metcalf breakdown, and we talked about why AJ Brown got targets and why the offense wasn't that great at Ole Miss when we broke around uh, broke down DK Metcalf. So if you want to, you can go check that out. Well, double announcement. It's a fresh pop. And the commission says... Double announcement. <laughs> Kamish says the final pick of day one is a, about to take place with the uh, sixth pick in the 2019 FF Dynasties. Mock it up before you fuck it up. Big Co is on the clock with my team. Cowboy butts drive me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> best team name so far. <laughs> Idiot. It is the best team name so far. The league name is Clash of the Tight Ends, so makes a little bit of sense in a yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's so proud of himself you got you know <laughs> big code completely didn't get it until i said yeah. well the, the name of the league is clash of the tight ends so you really <laughs> stuck with that name huh <laughs> yeah i thought oh, it was either that it. or uh well i put a name out there that i was going to change but i just never got around to it and i figured you did the same and then but you ha- we both had, I had the a, same. i had a reason to name mm. mine we got uh, yeah i mean yours is better than mine but it's not good it's best team name in the league man oh no 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 i Bunch got a bad name i got the best team what's name? your team name jay Samaj Etoi. That's not bad. Yeah, has nothing to do with tight if, ends, though. If Samaj P. Ryan was really good, <laughs> then it'd be the best name ever. <laughs> yeah, but he was not even relevant last year in this league. I mean, I guess Samaj Etoi and tight ends does have something to do with see, each other if you want to look at it like that. I'm not having a Samaj Etoi without a tight end or two. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Idiot. All right. Well. All right, so Casey comes clock? in. Big Co's on the clock. This is pick one six, correct? Yes. Casey comes into this draft, much like the Bears, fairly well-rounded team. Uh, we talked about this on Patreon a couple weeks ago about how he went through, maybe last week, about went, get, went through this startup auction and he purchased uh, Darius Geis and Hunter Henry, both already on the IR. Well, Hunter Henry never technically went on the IR, but he purchased two injured players for cheap 
Um, and I I like that because now coming into this year, he's got more players than you thought he had. And you're like, look at there. That's, Boom. That, that worked out well. Um, he's got uh, – and the one quarterback league, we're not going to start with quarterbacks, but that is his weakest position. Um, I had Alex Smith old reliable, but he might be <laughs> done for life. So <laughs> – I think I mean, you had Marcus Mariota. You must have. Well, I, I picked up Mariota. Okay, and obviously you picked up Derek Carr. Yeah. Um. So yeah. You, two yeah, two yeah, dollar accurate. pickup two dollar pickup quarterbacks right there. Uh, it's a Matt, short bench right now because it just started and we haven't expanded anything. It's only eighteen, 18 players, players with two taxi squads. So, very short bench. It's Three fun. IRs it, though. No reason not to have people in your IR. Very short bench and a big starting lineup requirement. Mm-hmm. So it's a fun league. Um, Matty Breida. Over there, who was playing hurt all last year, although playing well when he was playing. Crowell. Could be done for career. Probably out of here. Probably an easy cut at this point. Definitely on a short bench. Easy cut. Crowell's out of here. Only goes up from there. We'll add Uh, add players this year, but yeah. But Ezekiel Elliott, Mark Ingram, who left the Saints and somehow went to just as good of a position, which hardly never happens for a running back leaving the Saints. So you got two good starting running backs right there with Philip Lindsay, the undrafted mm, free third agent. good starting running another back. Another good right running back. And then Sonny Michelle, another good running back. And Darius Geis, another good running back. So Casey hit him hot and heavy. Um, and another shot of Rumpelmans. And then, so, and then he's got Doug Baldwin, which uh, we can all pour one out if that really comes to fruition because my heart will be broke. I love Doug Baldwin. Yeah. I'll I will be. say Casey was on the Doug Baldwin train way before me, and I got on at the towards the end of the line, and that wasn't nearly as much fun as Casey riding the real good Doug Baldwin train. Um, Chris Godwin, solid, solid asset. Deshaun Hamilton, a good pickup during the year because it's a cheap, uh, it's a small, up. small bench, small bench. So Deshaun was a great pickup. Uh, Allen Robinson, Golden Tate, Demarius Thomas. You know, heard his uh, what he blew, he blew his Achilles, uh, Achilles too. Yeah, right. Yeah, he did. Well, that was Manuel Sanders. Uh, I think Demarius might have done the same damn thing. thing. I don't know if he did. Well. Yikes! Hmm. Not good. Um, Sammy Watkins, Day Day. Sammy. So some starters there. Nothing really blowing you Will away. Will Fuller in the IR. Nothing really. Will Fuller. Don't forget in the IR. about that guy. Nothing. Nothing really blowing you away, but really solid. Uh, but then he turns up the heat. Eric Ebron, George Kittle. Again, I mentioned Hunter Henry. So he's got three like the top seven dynasty tight ends right there. Um, and yeah, you got Will Fuller and Darius Geis on the injury reserve. So Christian Kirk and Christian Kirk down there, like a pretty solid team. You you went into the draft like the Bears. You had no needs. Okay, so at one six, I almost hit you with Kyler Kyle, Murray. I almost hit you with Kyler <laughs> Murray. I swear. I, you, I, first of all, Casey hates quarterbacks, and he would have been upset. But I really did. I thought about throw. Obviously, you wouldn't need oh, it. Like you don't hate you, quarterbacks. You wouldn't too. need it. You wouldn't need to take him there. It's what we talk yeah. about this all the time. Even if you, if you, there's no reason to take Kyler Murray there, just hang on. And the upside of Kyler Murray could be a really good addition to your team, but at one quarterback league wasn't happening. Well, I made sure I took DK last pick, so he he didn't end up on my team. <laughs> um, so I went Debo Samuel. I was really looking really hard at trying to throw a wrench in the plans. I almost took TJ Hawkinson for you. I, you got a strength, throw a strength on it. There's, I think you could start what three, four tight ends in this league. Um, there's a, t- there's a bunch of, there's, there's a, there's a, there's, there's a, a fifth, you can there's, flex. I think you could flex three guys because I think you could start five wide receivers or five running backs. And I think you can start four tight ends. So you got George Kittle, you got Eric Ebron, you got Hunter Henry. And I really did almost take TJ Hawkinson for you, but I thought you might be upset with me. Oh, it's not. Not actually my team. No, this you is do, your team. Well, I'm, I'm saying, but this it, is your team. It's not. You're actually not actually making the picks for. Well, me. you know, it's, I, I I knew you'd hate me if I took Kyler Murray, and I thought you might say that was ridiculous for me to put Hawkinson on the team loaded with tight ends, which I don't mind adding a strength to a strength. But I took Debo because I thought you might need uh, a starter. Which there is could, three flexes, so you could potentially start four of any position. Yeah. Um, you know, and five. when a tight end's really going off in a tight end premium league, that's great. But a t- you know, a normal every run of the every day run two. of the mill. I played Ebron and and Kittle most weeks. Oh, obviously. But if if the tight ends aren't going off, then you probably rather have a good running back or a good wide receiver started in there. Um, I took Debo Samuel for you. I, there was a couple guys. I'd take Kyler Murray out of the equation. He would be a not a bad pick. But nobody's taking Kyler Murray at one six in a rookie draft. I hope you're not. But he he might crush. Um, 
I really did almost take Hawkinson. I gave you Debo, Debo Samuel. I was looking at a couple other wide receivers, but I felt like Debo Samuel with the draft capital going to a wide receiver needy team, Kyle Shanahan offense. I felt like, and I'm a Gamecock. I love Debo Samuel. I think he can do everything. He's very flexible, very versatile, going right down the middle of what the 49ers want to do. I feel like he was a really good, safe player for a team that didn't need anything. And you could play it the other. If I was going to take the absolute home run cut for your team, I almost gave you Miko Hardman. Mm-hmm. I almost gave you TJ Hawkinson. That's what I was saying the other just a minute ago or the other pick were for DK with K, you know, with your pick. And then when Jason was talking about it, it's like I I really feel like you can take pick one five and one ten and just jumble them all up and what's your taste? Right. And for me, for this team, my taste was Debo because you really don't need anything, but you could really use a court, a wide receiver that'll start and maybe be, if he can become as as consistent as I think he can be. Uh, you know, you got Daddy Westbrook; he might not be consistent. You got Sammy Watkins; he could be absolutely a league winner this year. Who knows? Golden Tate, Eli Manning might love him, and he might get ten catches a game, or he might be worthless. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, and Allen Robinson, if he gets the targets that he deserves, he could be a, a easy wide receiver one. Godwin and Will Fuller, baby. <laughs> you know, like you, you, they, they are all there for you. And I just threw Debo right in the mix, threw a little gasoline yeah. on the fire. I started. I think I started four running backs, two tight ends, and two receivers, pretty much every week. Yeah. Yeah, because you you had the running backs and and you know looking back on it after the discussions we've had in prior picks and some discussion off air and the way I'm talking about it right now, your team is set up and Jay Wayne really talked some sense into me earlier. Your team is set up for the home run cut, which is the way I would normally play it anyway in my rookie draft. But I just felt at the time when I gave you the Debo pick, I felt like it was a very good safe pick for a team that quite honestly is set up for a home run cut in the rookie draft, but also. It's almost like give me something that's definitely going to be yeah. good, and I watch me revel in my equity because you got you got well, you probably have a top three roster in this league, hands down. Yeah, I mean, I, I'd like to think so. I hope so. We'll see next year. Um, I didn't build my team to win now. Actually, I was building for the future, and if it just so happened to happen that I, that I could win now, which I didn't, I won some games. I missed the playoffs by a couple points, and then actually I got eliminated first week. So bummer. That's why I'm picking here. Right. Um, I don't hate the pick. I'm I'm down with Debo. I like Debo a lot. I think he's I think like you said, he's the 49ers are kind of putting a real emphasis on versatility so they can kind of interchange a lot of pieces and do a lot of different things. I think I think uh Debo screams that uh, along with Dante Pettis, but I, I like Debo a little more than than Dante Pettis. He can win in or outside. Um and he can do it in a variety of different ways. And he's just a bully with the ball in his hands. I mean, that's his name nickname is Debo. His real name's not Debo. His name's <laughs> you know Tyshawn or something like but that. How do you going, pronounce that? Tyshawn. Tyshawn. Bo Gamecox ain't never heard nothing but Debo. Yeah, yeah. We got. So, we knew when he got there he was Debo. When he left he was Debo. So yeah. Pops gave him the nickname like the the character from Friday. He Debo. People. He earned it because he's field. a bully. That's my bike, punk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love watching this guy play play ball. Uh, some people will say that. He's not that great outside. I think he's just fine outside. Um, Clemson in, in the Clemson game, you can see him kind of get jammed in in uh, when he's playing outside. He gets the jam. He kind of absorbs it, eats it, blows back on him, and still catches a slant for a touchdown. Um, so you could take that up and put that in your pipe and smoke it. Um, I think he's a tough, gritty player. Uh, he had the seventeen that was about to be amazing and got hurt, um, mm-hmm. and then throughout eighteen, you see him slowly kind of building back up. Uh, the speed and the from quickness the, from the broken so, foot. So I don't think well, it was there yeah, the whole I mean, time, but I think by the end of it, it was. And then you saw him test well at the combine. Um, he can. He's just a gritty. He's a good blocker. He's ready to roll. I think he fits right in with what Shanahan wants to do. They're looking to rebuild that and revamp that receiving core. And I think him and Pettis are nice uh, building blocks. Obviously, Godwin's still there. We talked about this a little bit on Patreon last week, but um, Goodwin is still there. Yeah, Goodwin. Sorry, and. Uh, I like I like the pick. I like, I'm I'm down with Debo. Yeah, I I like this pick. Uh, we haven't done a breakdown of Debo, uh, so to give you a little bit of background, he is 23 years old. So Simmons is old. You know, a lot of people go to college for seven years. So on Twitter, when I was doing first doing the research, <laughs> and I thought maybe we would do a rookie breakdown on this guy, I didn't quite get to it. But I asked what the big problem, what why more people didn't have Debo high, and really nothing came back besides injuries and that he was long in the tooth. So he's old. He has a late breakout age, 
20.6, so that's not good. He has a 42nd percent college dominator, so not good. I don't think. I don't. I think he wanted in a much higher. I think 40 is a good percentage, but not the of the 40th rank. percentile. Right, not the percentile. But he does have 85 percentile spark score, so you know, pick that's your not poison. Cut it. That's not gonna cut it. It doesn't cut it. Uh, but I think you can make an excuse for. The late breakout age, I mean, that's it, it's with another knock. It's his injury history. Uh, dealt with a hamstring injury most of 2015. Only played five games. Gamecocks went 3-9 and nine that year without him. Uh, he picked up another hamstring injury in before the season started in 2016. Played a couple games to start that year and then missed the next four. And then, like you said, fractured his fibula in uh, 2017 versus Kentucky. Thought he Tried might to come, play. Right. They thought he might come back for the bowl game. He ended up sitting that out. Tried to play after he hurt himself. Yeah. He, he yeah. He's tough walked off nails. the field and walked around, put his helmet back on. Tried to pretend like his foot wasn't broke. Yeah. yeah. He's tough. Look to, to go against the Dominator rating for a second. Uh, he's played the whole oh, What? Time. You the, can't go against the Dominator rating? To go with crazy? To, to, to explain that. <laughs> like, we've, he's got, he's got a, we had Hayden Hurst out there that was actually very dominant at the college level for a, an old tight end that just stopped playing baseball and had minimal reps at football for a couple of years. He was out there making plays. Just and Brian bastardizing Edwards, the the yeah. the, uh, the breakout the, the, age. Yeah, old Hayden exactly, Hurst over there. Exactly. <laughs> it, he was out there. <laughs> <laughs> so Hayden Hurst was out there making plays against young boys because he was a grown man and he was making them look stupid. And why not, not sure if the breakout age matters for tight if you need not, if you need anything you throw it to Hayden Hurst because he's 26 already and been in the Air Force or something and played football and ba- baseball and he's just a grown man uh, and Brian Edwards was super solid uh, smartly didn't come out in this strip wide receiver class because it was stacked went back to school thankfully uh, Gamecocks need him um, and we got like a Shaw Smith out there catching yeah. some ball we got we had some weapons we couldn't tackle anybody for a couple years now so we can't win games but like we had some weapons and it wasn't just the now that's 2017 when before he broke his foot he was we, about to have a break a, a breakout it was dominant the dominator <laughs> rating was there through five games it was to, he scored throwing the ball scored catching the ball scored running the ball scored kick a kickoff return he had all four different scores and he had like six six or seven scores in the first four games D- unstoppable and then he hurt his foot which happens yep. in football talking yep. about injuries like he broke his foot a couple of soft tissues and then a, and then a foot break but I'm um, I'm in on the Debo and I like I like the landing spot so what if this is your team? Mm-hmm. So given, like you said, you took DK, so you couldn't go to your <laughs> team. If if you were on the clock there at one six, would you take Debo? Would you take Hawk? Would you take Paris Campbell? Like what 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 would you do if it was yours? Hmm. Should I should we throw that to Patreon or should I? Uh, okay, should we can I take answer? that to Patreon. What do, you, what do you guys think? I think we should take it to Patreon. All right, that's a personal question. A little a little bit more for Debo. I mean, he's he's. You guys mentioned it after the catch. He's just one of the sickest dudes on the field. Like if you watch that Clemson game, he made us look pretty stupid in 2018. The game was already over, but we could not tackle this dude. He broke. Well, like it was 28 14. Then it made it not over again because he. Everybody knew that when your offense got the ball, we couldn't stop you, but. Debo single-handedly kept the score close two times in a row to yeah. give us a chance to make the game not over, and you eventually made you know did he, what you do. He was crushing it. He's very versatile. He goes all over the place. He he does work from the slot. He's got some ridiculous one-handed catches. He can make the wild play. I think he varies his play speed. I like him off the line of scrimmage. He's got a good hesitation and jab step. He sets up defenders well, and. You know, you see him lined up at halfback sometimes. That's no, kind of no cool. Doubt. He, he can do a lot with quick tosses and jet sweeps. He crushed kick returns. So there's a lot of ways for him to get on the field, a lot of ways to get the ball in his hands, and a lot of ways for him to prove his value and to be successful. And then you want to throw coach speak into here. You got Kyle Shanahan and oh, Jimmy G and the 49ers, and they needed a wide receiver, and they took him really high. Right. I think the third wide receiver off the board. Yep. And not a lot of people saw that coming, but a lot of people did like him. And Early second. A lot to like about this dude. Uh, I'm cool with this pick. What I like a lot about him is, like y'all two who are not watching a lot of Gamecock games, the easiest thing to see is how good he is after the catch. But the good thing about Debo is, and the reason that I got a good, strong feeling, we've, Gamecocks have put out some decent wide receivers that weren't too great in the NFL. Obviously, Sidney Rice had Brett Favre for a little while, and he was a crusher. But when... Debo is kind of Debo him. is good at being able to get the ball. 
and he's good, at, and he will. And if the ball gets anywhere close, he's going to catch it. There's a lot of guys that are good with the ball in their hands, but they can't either a get open to catch the ball or yeah. b catch it to begin with. Right. So Debo can do those two things, and once he gets the ball, he is ridiculous. He did have so, eleven drops, was seventy second in drop rate, but still a lot of drops out there for all these guys. Tons of drops out there. But I like the pick. Uh, so I think I think that'll wrap up today's show. Yeah, let's get out of here. Uh, yeah, definitely go check out the website. We've been to, to recite all the stats and everything for you guys and, and anything combine-wise. We're, we're checking out the player pages on the, the FFDynasty.com. Uh, if, you've, if you've visited the website in the past and if you experienced any latency, I think I got all the kinks ironed out. Things seem to be running pretty smooth from end to end. Definitely go check it out. Let me know. I'd love to hear any feedback, positive or negative. Uh, reach us on the Twitter at the FF Dynasty. And uh, we have our indi- own individual handles at Dynasty Big Co, at IMC Myers, at Jay Wayne's World. We'd love a five star review on iTunes. That would be just the best. For sure. And just p- piggyback on Jay Wayne's effort here. I mentioned this maybe a week or three ago on the on the uh, um, pleasure chest on Patreon. Like, we don't have all the player pages yet on all the players in the NFL. But as these guys are going in as rookies here, what the, the player pages that are up for these rookies are ridiculous. These are really, really awesome. So if you haven't been to the website yet, you should go check it out. And then once you do, you'll be like, dang, I need to pay Jay Wayne to make me a website. Because this boy self-taught in the last two years. And this is a sick website. It's not, it's not complete from A to Z with all the players yet. But the ones he's put his hands on, those are some cool player pages. You should go check it out. Definitely uh, put a lot of work into that thing. So would love, like I said, any feedback. And we're about to go over to Patreon. We're going to recap these first six picks and talk about where we disagreed and who's dumb and who's smart and uh, why and why not. So we're going to have some fun with that. And if uh, we have some time, we might jump into this UDPL rookie draft that we had, where you know other uh, Twitter dynasty podcasts are in this league with us and, and they get to all put their stamp on who and what, and there's a lot of activity and trading and, and it all correlates to a lot of questions that we're answering on our community page on Patreon, a ton of draft questions coming in about, Hey, I'm on the clock at two six and I got these guys I'm looking at, who do I take? And we're trying to help everybody through their picks as we also work through our mock it up. And, uh, we just appreciate you guys listening and if you want some more content, head over to Patreon. Obviously, after six months, you get that dope T-shirt. Heard nothing but great things about that soft, uh, pleasurable T-shirt. Yeah, I'm going to need another one because my wife took mine. Nice. Well, we could get your wife one. No, no, no problem. Fair enough. Uh, all right, guys. Till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasties Married to the Game.